Okay then, so in this video, I'm gonna be looking at an electrode potential six mark level of response question. Okay, this is from an AQA A-level chemistry pass paper. This is from paper theory, right? So we've got a practical question here, guys. Um, a lot of people struggle with these practical um, responses. So hopefully this, this can help you guys out. So let's jump straight into this question then. So I'm just gonna read through this. If you wanna skip straight through, read it yourself, that's fine, just skip ahead. Um, it is difficult to ensure consistency with the setup of a standard hydrogen electrode, okay? A copper two plus copper electrode, uh, we have an electrode potential voltage here, can be used as a secondary standard. A student does an experiment to measure the standard electrode potential for this titanium oxide, titanium electrode, using the copper two plus copper electrode as a secondary standard. Whoop. A suitable solution containing the acidified titanium oxide ion is formed when titanium 4 oxysulfate, uh, this guy right here, is dissolved in 0.5 mole per decimeter cubed sulfuric acid to make 50 centimeters cubed of solution. Really pay attention to these variables here because if you want five, six, you know, if you want these top marks, you're going to have to mention data as well and do some calculations. Really be as precise as possible with your chemistry terminology, your chemistry data, um, accuracy, things like this, okay? Okay, describe, that's our command word here, don't have to explain anything. Describe an experiment the student does to show that the standard electrode potential for this electrode is minus 0.88 volts. Um, then we've got a bunch of data here. The student is provided with copper two plus copper electrode, um, solid titanium oxysol, okay, solid, that's important to note here. Got an MR value, 0.5 mole per decimeter cubed sulfuric acid, not too bad, a strip of titanium, lab equipment, uh, lab apparatus and chemicals, blah, 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 blah. Okay, your answer should include details of, okay, so this is what we wanna take a note of, okay? Should include details of how to prepare the solution uh, how to connect, I might as well highlight the whole thing, right? <laughs> how to connect the electrodes, um, how to connect the electrodes, uh, measurements taken, how the measurements should be used to calculate the standard electrode potential. Calculate the standard electrode potential measurements. All right, I'm gonna, <laughs> no point highlighting this, the whole thing here. Okay, so what do we have to think of first, okay? Pause the video, think to yourself, attempt the question, think to yourself, what do we have to do here? So I'm gonna label this one. Firstly, how to prepare the solution, what are we going to do here? All right, first things first, guys, I'm gonna draw a little diagram here just to sort of explain myself. So if we have a nice beaker here, uh, with our solution, we've got our titanium uh, strip there with uh, the, the wire going off, right? So this is gonna be our titanium solid, okay? This is gonna be our titanium uh, O2 plus solution, okay? Now, electric potential is really important to keep this in mind, okay? I'm gonna draw it as big as possible, E, electro potentials, all right? It always has this symbol right here, okay? Whoop. Sigma, okay? This is standard conditions, all right? This is going to dictate what we do in this first part of the question, okay? So they've told us that we're using solid titanium uh, titanium oxysulfate, okay? Now here, this 0.5 mole per decimeter cube sulfuric acid, you may be thinking, hold on, what's going on here? So I'm gonna briefly explain this on a, on a little tangent here. H2SO4, okay? Under standard conditions of electropotentials, you need your solution to be acidified Okay, so that involves, um, so if you think to yourself quickly before I go on here, standard conditions then of a solution in electropotentials or any topic really is going to be one mole per decimeter cubed, okay? So sulfuric acid then, strong acid, right? So when it dissociates, ultimately what we're going to be given here is two moles of H plus ions, okay? So although standard conditions is one mole per decimeter cubed, for the, uh, the, the solution here. Once this dissociates, this ultimately is going to become one mole per decimeter cubed because the sulfuric acid dissociates into two protons. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, brush up on acids and bases, all right? So what we have to do here is we have to say, okay, what, how do we work out what mass of this solid titanium oxysulfate do we need to add to solution in order to make the solution one mole per decimeter cubed um, of this guy specifically, okay, our titanium O2 plus. So what we can do here is just use our mole equations, all right, classic mole equation, N equals CV, okay? Now, we want to know what mass is required. So what we're gonna have to do is gonna input some values here and then um, solve, uh, put it into another mole equation in order to solve it, okay? So I'm actually gonna do that up here. Um, let's go back to our black. 
n equals cv, where are we going with this? Like I said, we're going to input into the next one. The next equation you should remember is n equals m over mr. Okay, rearrange this in order to make mass a subject. So once we find the moles, we can do that right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, our moles then of our titanium O2 plus equals going to be our conch that we want. Okay, the desired concentration is one mole, mole per decimeter cubed multiplied by our volume here. Okay, which is given to us in the question uh, up here somewhere. I remember it was yeah 50 centimeters cubed of solution. That's what we want. Okay. Um, so I'm going to times that by 50. Now this is centimeters cubed. Our concentration is in moles per decimeter cubed. So we've got to chuck a divide by a thousand on there, which is exactly the same as times 10 to the minus three. All right. And if you plug that into your calculator, that's going to give you a mole value of 50 times 10 to the minus three mole. Okay, so what we can do here is we can plug this, whoop, plug that in here. We're already given our MR, so that's, you know, saved us some time. And we can work out what mass is required. Therefore, the mass of the solid, this solid right here, this titanium oxysulfate, titanium OSO4 equals, now all we have to do here is rearrange this, okay? So we're going to rearrange this equation to make mass the subject. So it's going to be moles times MR now, okay? So our moles, what did we say? It was 50 times 10 to the minus 3. Okay, we're going to times that by our MR, which is given to 159.9. Okay, so that is going to give us an answer of 7.995 grams to four significant figures, all right? Um, in the mark scheme, you can round this to eight. It's completely fine. I just left it as this to be as accurate as possible. Normally, if you want your answer to three sig figs, keep it one or two extra. OK, so that is the the awkward like calculation part. A lot of students may not think that you have to do this, but just remember this standard standard conditions. All right. Really important here. They've given us all these values for a reason so we can work out the mass of the solid required that we need to dissolve in the acid. OK, so next up, then I'm just going to briefly outline what we have to do in this experiment. OK. Okay, so I filled in a few bullet points. All right, guys, level of response, bullet points, all good to go. Not an essay question. Always have to repeat that, but some people don't realize it. Okay, so completely fine. So what I've outlined here is some details of the experiment what, that we have to do to prepare the solution. All right, so, oh, let's change that to green. Green's always nice. Makes you feel good inside, doesn't it? Whoop, green tick. <laughs> okay, so use a balance to weigh out 7.995 grams of titanium oxysulfate using a weigh by difference method, all right? Getting all the marks here, guys. Use a balance, okay? This is our apparatus. Chemistry terminology, always good to add in. And then this method here, way by difference method, okay? Familiarize yourself with this, okay? Moving on, add titanium oxysulfate to the beaker of 50 mole per decimeter cubed sulfuric acid and leave to dissolve, stir if required. So just a few uh, extra details here, adding this to this, letting it dissolve, all right? Really important that it dissolves before we begin uh, our electrode experiment. Transfer the solution to a volumetric flask, okay? Another apparatus mentioned here, always be as accurate as possible with your uh, apparatus. Um, with washings, all right, really important here, we want to get all of the solid, all of the solution out, um, make up to a mark with distilled water. Okay, so that's the first point out of the way. What I'm going to focus on next is our point two here, how to connect the electrodes. So what I'm going to do is just draw a diagram, a very detailed label diagram, and that should be able to get us all the marks we need rather than writing out a load of information. It's just easier, quicker for us to, if we just quickly get it on the page as a diagram, okay? All right, I've drawn my diagram. As you can tell, I obviously did A-level art, right? So what I'm going to do is <laughs> I'm going to label this up um, so we get all our marks available, okay? So this right here is a high-resistance voltmeter. So I'm just going to say voltmeter, and then in brackets, high-resistance. Okay, uh, might as well add it in to prevent current flow. What? to prevent current flow. Okay, so I'm detailed labeling right here. Um, next up, okay, we're gonna have our um, titanium oxide half cell and our copper half cell. Now in this diagram, um, you can get this either way round, but in terms of teaching you some extra info, um, always good to have some juicy tips. If we remember the NOPR rule, okay, some of you may learn it as the no problem rule. Um, if we if we take this into account, okay, our negative half cell is going to be oxidized, our positive half cell is going to be reduced. OK, now by convention, what we can do is you can think back to your equation and you can think of 
the reduced cell is always going to be on the right hand side okay so our more positive half cell is going to be on the right hand side so we've got some data in the table here our electro potential this is 0 0.34 okay and our electro potential of the titanium half cell is 0 negative 0 0.88 okay so this is our more negative half cell so it's going to be oxidized therefore it's going to go on the left hand side of the diagram now aqa doesn't take into account you doing all this it doesn't penalize you essentially for drawing them the wrong way round so i'm just going to do it the accurate way um, but if you got this mixed up completely fine all right so on this side then our more negative half cell is going to be our titanium okay so this is going to be our titanium electrode uh, solid right there and this is going to be our titanium uh, o2 plus aqueous okay or uh, titanium oxysulfate if you want to write the whole thing out and this is going to be to one mole per decimeter cubed all right, really important standard conditions of a solution here, which we spent ages working out. Um, next one then is going to be our copper electrode. Copper electrode, because that's the other half cell we're comparing it to. And this is obviously a solid as well. And then we've got our copper 2 plus aqueous um, solution, also to one, one mole per decimeter cubed. All right. Now... Voltmeter done, electrodes done, this done. All we're missing is this cheeky guy in the middle, right? This is our salt bridge. Salt bridge. And then I'm just gonna briefly outline what that is based on the practical practical outline. So that's gonna be filter paper, filter paper soaked in potassium nitrate, uh, aqueous. Okay, easy as that, right? All our points covered based on this now i'm going to outline a brief bullet point saying basically do what i did in the diagram okay set up respective half cells all right so that's pretty much it for the experiment so we've connected the electrodes or we'll go to our juicy green again Boop. so all we have to do for this part is to use our equation okay the electro potential of the entire cell okay equals the electro potential of our reduced half cell reduced whoop minus the electro potential of our oxidized half cell okay now there are other ways to remember this equation okay you can remember it simply as the the way i said before with electro potential of the right hand cell right hand side minus the electro potential of the left hand side either way is fine now we knew that based on the nopr rule that our red right hand cell is going to be the reduced half cell our copper two plus right here and then the left hand cell is going to be the oxidized this one now, personally, it's up to you guys. You use whichever one you find easiest, but I recommend this one, okay? Because if you don't have a diagram or you don't have a list of what cells on what side, you can work it out based directly on the NOPR rule of which one is oxidized, which one is reduced, and then chuck that into your equation and you'll be all good to go. So I actually missed a bit here, measurement taken, all right? So we can actually just add in something super quick to cover that point right here, is just record the electro potential or record voltage of the cell. All right, so I've added that in right there really quick, not too bad. So what I'm gonna do is actually put our values into this equation right here to show um, show that the electro potential is the minus, where you gone, where you gone? All right here, minus 0 0.88. Okay, that's all I'm gonna do here. So following this equation then, simple as that guys, 0 0.34 was the reduced half cell. Okay, our copper guy right here given in the, in the data. And we're gonna minus what the potential is here that they've given us, the minus 0 0.88. So we're going to minus 0 0.88 because that's our more oxidized half cell, our more negative half cell. Plug that into your calculator and you get a value of positive 1.22 volts. Chuck a positive in there just in case. Um, now, all we can do is have a closing statement here, simple as that. So how the measurement should be used to calculate the standard electric potential of this. Now, if we take our recording of the voltage of the entire cell, okay, what we can do then is we can say that if we get this value, if we get the 1.22, then it proves to us that the half cell voltage is negative 0.88, okay? So I'm going to write that right here. All right, easy as that, guys. Closing statement, okay? If electric potential of the cell equals the positive 1.22, therefore, our electric potential of that uh, half cell, our titanium half cell, is negative 0.88, bish bash bosh okay so this is quite i found it quite a difficult question to be honest um there's a lot of time involved okay for six marks you're just there like what the hell aqa what are you doing to me okay so 
read through the question. There's, there's an absolute ton of data here, okay? So the question itself is not that difficult. It's just processing the information that can take an absolute ton of time. Oh, I forgot a tick right here. Whoop. Ah, oh, it's red. No, mate. Green, that's what we want. Good, good. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I I just butchered this whole thing by, t by highlighting everything. You don't want to do that, okay? What you want to do is highlight only the key information. So don't highlight any of this um, would be my advice there. But like I did up here, highlight the key information. You can always scan back to it and say, okay, is this variable correct? Did I put it in right? Um, next thing I would say, just make a note of the standard conditions all right it always applies to these sort of questions the other standard conditions that weren't mentioned in this question um that i possibly should have mentioned here actually would have been the 298 kelvin okay next up is going to be the pressure okay 100 kilopascal but do we have any gases here no we do not so therefore it's not required okay pressure is only required for a condition of a gas so then we've got our moles out of the way. You'd use your classic amount of substance calculations. Please, by now, hopefully you know these off by heart. And then just outline as detailed as possible in terms of the apparatus, um, the, the, the data here, the 7.995 that we just calculated, the different methods, okay, way by difference method, the, the washings method, okay, um, the, the detail of which apparatus we're using, volumetric flask, um, the balance, okay, all this stuff is going to be able to get you as many marks as possible in terms of the accuracy, showing off your chemistry knowledge, okay? That's what you want to do in these six mark level of response. Next up then, nice little drawing here, nice little diagram um, of everything we need with detail, as much detail as required. So solid, solid, aqueous, aqueous with the standard conditions here. Salt bridge is our filter paper soaked in this guy right here, potassium nitrate. Um, and then brief calculation. Remember this equation, guys. Do your best to remember this equation. Um, you can remember it this way or this way. Either way is fine. Um, set it up in this way. Record the voltage of the cell and then do our little closing statement here. Now, hopefully, um, these are hard to mark, all right? So I did my best to include all the information I needed. Um, hopefully this is six marks if not oh well i tried my best all right that's all you can do at the end of the day so that's the end of the video guys hopefully you found it useful hopefully you learned something brushed up on your practical techniques your electro potential knowledge um, I rambled a bit, but hopefully that's all right. So yeah, if you did learn something, if you found it useful, be sure to like the video, subscribe for future maths and science content. It really helps the channel grow. Best of luck in your exams, guys. Peace.